Chapter 1 The Physical Divisions of India We will study the following points in this chapter. 1.1 1 .1, Introduction 1.2 Location and Extent 1.3 Surrounding Nations 1.4 Process of Identification of a Region 1.5 Physical Divisions One point one Introduction India, our homeland, is a great country in terms of its geography and history. It has been well known for its cultural and commercial prosperity for a long time. The Aryan assimilation with the earlier Dravidian inhabitants has formed the classical Indian culture. Arabs came to India in the 8th century and Turks in the 12th century, followed by European traders in the late 15th century. India is a land of great diversity. It has a large extent and geographical variations which are reflected by the variety of natural resources. It spreads from the snowy ranges of Himalayas in the north to Kanyakumari in the south. India has plenty of natural resources like sunshine, fertile soil, water, minerals, vegetation, animal life, etc. All these together contribute to the progress of our homeland. The name Bharat is accepted by the Constitution of India as the official name for the country. India is a democratic country which is divided into 28 states and 7 union territories for the convenience of administration and regional development. Rajasthan is the largest state in terms of area followed by Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, whereas Goa is the smallest state of India. One point two Location and Extent India lies in the northern and eastern hemispheres. It has a central position in the southern part of the ancient continent. The Tropic of Cancer passes through the central part of India. The latitudinal extent of mainland India is from 8 degrees 4 minutes and 28 seconds north to 37 degrees 6 minutes 53 seconds north. Thus its latitudinal extent is 29 degrees 2 minutes 25 seconds. Away from the mainland, the southernmost tip of India is Indira Point, which is in the Nicobar Islands. It is located at 6 degrees 45 minutes north latitude. Latitudinal extent has an impact on rainfall, temperature, and duration of days and nights. The difference between the longest and shortest day near Kanyakumari is about 45 minutes, whereas the difference is nearly 4 hours at Leh located in Ladakh. India's longitudinal extent is from 68 degrees 7 minutes 33 seconds east to 97 degrees 24 minutes 47 seconds east. Thus its longitudinal extent is 29 degrees 17 minutes 14 seconds. Local time, sunrise, sunset, etc. are determined 
by longitudinal extent. The difference in the time of sunrise at Kibitu in Arunachal Pradesh in the east and Guwar Mota in Gujarat in the west is about 116 minutes. The meridian of longitude 82 degrees 30 minutes east which passes close to Allahabad is taken as a standard meridian. India's standard time IST is determined as per the local time of this longitude. The Indian Ocean is the only ocean in the world that has been named after a country. India is the seventh largest country in the world with a total land area of 32 lakhs 87,263 square kilometers. The distance from the westernmost point in Gujarat to the easternmost point in Arunachal Pradesh is about 2,993 kilometers while the distance between the northernmost point in Kashmir and the southernmost mainland point is about 3,000 214 kilometers. It has a land frontier of about 15,200 kilometers and a coastline of about 7,517 kilometers. 1.4 Process of Identification of a Region What is a region? On what basis are regions defined? All these we have studied in the 9th standard. This year in the 10th standard, let us follow the regional approach for a detailed study of our country. A region is a specific area. It can be a small or a large geographic area. In each region, there are one or more core areas. The geographical pattern is well developed in these core areas and with increasing distance, the uniqueness becomes less apparent. However, they never lose the main regional characteristics. Regions are identified on the basis of common characteristics, contiguity and similarity like physiographical regions, climatic regions, forest regions, etc. They can also be identified on the basis of one or multiple factors. Physical regions can be identified on the basis of Physical factors like origin, location, relief, rock type, landforms, climate, soils, forest, etc. Economic regions are based on economic factors like industries, transportation, levels of development, etc. Agricultural regions are formed according to crops, crops combination, etc. Social and cultural regions are identified on the basic factors like population, sex ratio, language, etc. For the geographical regions, boundaries are drawn roughly on maps because these boundaries are mostly in the form of transitional zones. The political and administrative regions have well demarcated boundaries and are shown accurately on maps. For example, the divisions of a nation 
into states and states into districts, etc. The demarcation of regions is such that there is a little variation within each region while each region is distinctly different from the other. Regional approach in geographical studies is very important. It focuses on particular area of the earth. It studies all physical human aspects. These aspects interact with each other and work in unison. They provide relatively homogeneity to the regions. Homogeneity is the foundation of regional approach. It is an organized study of various phenomena spatially related to each other. It may be homogeneous distribution of some phenomena within it. The process of segregating an area into smaller segments is called regionalization. Regionalization is quite necessary because the region is a base for economic development. It is also important for many historical, political, economical and sociological analysis. The physical factors are relatively static as compared to other factors. They are fundamental for regional planning and development. To solve various problems, it is necessary to have small regions. Man is the driving force to develop a region. On the basis of physical factors, we can identify some homogeneous regions in India. These are known as physical or natural divisions of India. In regional hierarchy, at a higher level, the region is larger, more complex, but generalized. The hierarchy of administrative regions comprises of a country, state, district, taluka, blocks, and village. 1.5 Physical Divisions India, due to its large extent, has a great geographical diversity. A large area is covered by the old plateau. The remaining divisions are relatively younger. They are characterized by very high relief, low-lying plains, hot and cold climate, dry and wet conditions, fertile and infertile soils, heavy and low rainfall, etc. However, there is some similarity in this diversity. Consequently, on the basis of structure, landforms, climate, soils, natural vegetation, population and settlement pattern, cultural aspects, economic development, etc. The country can be grouped into five major divisions which can be further subdivided. These broad divisions are grossly different from each other and each has a distinctive personality which has its own potentials and challenges. These physical divisions are 1. The Northern Mountain Region 2. The Northern Plains 3. The Peninsula Plateau 4. The Coastal Plains 5. The Islands 1. The Northern Mountain Region 
The Himalayas are young fold mountains which have the highest relief in the world. These mountains have a granitic core and are flanked by metamorphed sedimentary rocks. The structure of the region is very complex. It has very uneven topography with steep slopes, lofty snow-covered peaks, cold climates, narrow deep valleys and swift flowing rivers. There are few roads, small scattered and terraced agricultural patches, extensive uninhabited natural landscape, etc. The eastern parts of this region have heavy rain, thick growth of natural vegetation and numerous isolated cultural groups who live in scattered settlements. 2. The Northern Plains These plains form an unbroken belt of alluvial soil, which increases in thickness from west to east. It has a very gently sloping landscape. The rivers flow slowly and form alluvial plains. Hence, the soil is very fertile and this region is agriculturally very important. The density of population is very high and infrastructure is well developed here except the desert of Rajasthan. Three, the Peninsular Plateau. This plateau is stable compared to the other physical divisions. It is one of the oldest landmasses in the world. It is the largest physical division of India. This region is triangular in shape. It is composed of very old igneous and metamorphic rocks. The numerous landform features are associated with faulting and volcanic activities. It is characterized by horizontally layered lava, rocky hills, plateaus, detached low hills and several falls are found here. This region has fertile black soil. It is rich in mineral resources. The distribution of human settlements is uneven. 4. The Coastal Plains This region can be divided on the basis of their location into two divisions. The Western Coastal Plain The Eastern Coastal Plain The Western Coastal Plain is characterized by seasonal rivers high relief, dissected terrain, faulted structures, intended coastline, rias, and cliffs. The coast has a number of bays, headlands, estuaries, backwater lagoons, swamps, salt marshes, mangrove forests and clean and beautiful beaches, etc. The Eastern Coastal Plain The Eastern Coastal Plain is characterized by the deltaic plains. These deltas are formed due to the depositional work of rivers. Extensive deltas of the Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna and the Kaveri rivers, etc. are the characteristic features of this coastal region. 5. The Islands There are two groups of islands, the Arabian Sea Islands and the Bay of Bengal Islands. The Arabian Sea Islands Lakshwadeep Minikoy, 
and Amindivi Islands are a group of islands in the Arabian Sea. These are located 200 to 440 kilometers of the southwestern coast of India. These islands form the smallest union territory of India. Their total surface area is 32 square kilometers. Kavarati is the capital of this union territory. The Bay of Bengal Islands The North Andaman Islands are physically characterized by a central range and a number of narrow valleys. The Little Andaman is almost flat except a northern hilly tract. The Nicobars forming the summit of the submarine mountain range are hilly in character. The surface has been highly cut up by small streams. The depressions are filled up to form alluvial plains. Physiographic regions of India Regions Subregions Percentage approximate The Northern Mountain Region the Western Himalayas, Central Himalayas, Eastern Himalayas, 15%. The Northern Plain Region, the Deserts, the Western Plain, the Central Plain, the Delta and Eastern Plain, 32%. The Peninsula Plateau Region, the Central Highland, the Deccan Plateau, 53%. The Ghats and Coastal Plains, the Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, Western Coastal Plain, the Eastern Coastal Plain, 53%. The Islands, the Arabian Sea Islands, Bay of Bengal Islands Land Frontier Name of the country States sharing the land boundary Length of border shared in percentage Pakistan Gujarat Rajasthan Punjab Jammu and Kashmir 22% Afghanistan, Jammu and Kashmir, 00.70%. China, Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, 23%. Nepal, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, Sikkim, 12%, Bhutan, Sikkim, West Bengal, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, 04.50%, Myanmar, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, 10.80%, Bangladesh, West Bengal, Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, Mizoram, 27%. Water Frontier India is bounded by the Arabian Sea in the west and southwest, the Bay of Bengal in the east and the southeast and the Indian Ocean in the south. The 
Kanyakumari is the southern tip of the Indian Peninsula. Sri Lanka is separated from India by the Gulf of Manor and the narrow channel of Park Street. India shares maritime. Geology The present physical structure of India is the result of long geological process. India is known for its wide-ranging geological features as well as variety of minerals. Generally, India is composed of three physiographic units. The Himalayan mountains, the northern plains, and the peninsular plateaus. Earlier, all the major land masses were together called as the Pangaea, huge single landmass, a supercontinent. The landmass probably split into a northern Laurasia, Eurasia plus North America, and a southern Gondwana land and these were separated by the Tetsche Sea. The Gondwana land was a single landmass that included South America, Africa, India, Australia, and Antarctica. Convectional currents split the crust into a number of pieces. The Indo-Australian plate drifted towards the north after being separated from Gondwana land. The northward drift resulted in the collision of the plate with the much larger Eurasian plate. Due to this collision, the sedimentary rocks which were formed at the bottom of the sea of Tetsis folded to form the Himalayan mountain system. This is a young and unstable zone with the high peaks, deep valleys and swift flowing rivers. In due course of time, the depression between the uplifted young Himalayas and the old peninsula plateau gradually filled with sediments deposited by the river flowing from the Himalayas in the north and the peninsula plateau in the south. Extensive alluvial deposits led to the formation of the northern plains of India. Geologically, the peninsula plateau is one of the ancient and most stable landmasses of the earth's surface. The plateau is mainly made of igneous and metamorphic rocks with smoothly rising hills and broad valleys. The northward movements of the Indo-Australian plate have also changed the location and size of the Indian subcontinent over millions of years. The movement of the plate led to stresses in the crust leading to folding faulting and volcanic activity. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are believed to have been formed along with the formation of Himalayas by volcanic activity. Besides geological formations, a number of processes such as weathering, erosion and deposition have created and modified the relief to its present form. Our country has all the major physical features of the earth, that is, mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus, and islands. The height of the Himalayas is still increasing due to continued convergence.
The Peninsula Plateau is the oldest one and the center of all geological activities which took place in and around it. The oldest gneiss and granites can be seen in the Arabli Mountains. It was a part of Gondwana land till it broke and drifted from the southern landmasses.